footy is back. G'day, welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, Brian. No, I'm Alex Donnelly. I am back in the chair after someone tried to steal my name and my job on Monday. You know what? You can actually have it. I had a great time on my sneaky little holiday. As always... Joined by the star of the show, back in the middle, happy where they are, Bryony Dawson. Thank you very much. I'm scraping myself to the finish line uh, over the next couple of weeks, mate. It's been uh, it's been a big couple of weeks. It has. And over there, he's not happy with his men's side because once again, right. they've made horrendous drafting decisions in just basically, it's a day that ends in why water is wet, etc. But the women's team going into a preliminary final, hosting it on Saturday. It is the fake fan, Lee McCallion, hey. also known as the stats guy, because he is not going to the prelim final. I will be watching it, but I yeah, cannot attend. But I'm absolutely pumped for the women's. Is that because you're going to go buy a steamer so yeah, you can I know, I know. uncrinkle you can't this tell shirt? On camera, but you, can, damn it, you can tell from here. I did check on camera. So, stats guy. <laughs> Please enlighten the audience why, as to why. Why do they care? Why do they because care? Because there might they, be a fair few North care. Melbourne fans out there knowing why a I'm host trying a, to still go to both, but a host on right. AFLW show. Why aren't you attending the preliminary final this Saturday uh, afternoon? I got a uh, festival ticket that I bought a year ago, pretty much, uh, that I did not know was going to align because the AFLW fixture is always very late. So that's. But I'll be at the grand final. We're I'm not, missing the grand North, final. Oh, there you go. See, that's worse. I'm missing the grand. Normally, I'm <laughs> yeah, but you're on ho- you're, you're I'm hosting, hosting the netball awards. Like, yes, I understand that, but. I'm missing it. Like everything's because hopefully I'll be at the granny. We moved North the grand there. final from the afternoon to the night, and it's just cooked your plans completely. No, it was on a Sunday. We're <laughs> safe on the Sunday. Also, why are we playing on a Saturday? Because the BBL fi- WBBL finals on the I Sunday. I don't care about your big butt finals. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, this game should be on a Friday night when it's not 35 degrees. And it's a prime time fixture. I don't get why it's at three or five on a Saturday. Because better homes and gardens is on stats. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Like anyway, don't get me started with that. Anyway, that is our complaining about the AFLW fixture out of the way. We are here for prelim final week, the purest week of footy this weekend. Every year, prelim finals are great. It's so good, isn't it? It's juicy. Last week was great. I wasn't here on Monday. I nearly passed out from excitement on Saturday night at Icon Park. Also, ahead of their preliminary final this Saturday night, from the Brisbane Lions, Jade Ellinger is joining us as well. Big social media star, a lot of runoff halfback and some funny stuff on TikTok that I saw this morning. So mm-hmm. we'll get into all Beautiful. of that. Plus, basically, we might talk a little bit of footy. Just a bit. Just a bit. footy's back. Just footy is back. it's a prelim week. Come so on. Before we get into it, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow AFLW today on all the social medias and get around this wherever you can get your podcasts. So Apple Podcasts, Google, all that good stuff. YouTube's where you get everything that we do. It's just AFL today. Search that up. You'll see Stats Guy went three hours on a dr- live stream last night for the oh. draft. That was just ridiculous. Get, like They need to fix that up in the men's. Facebook, but- Instagram, TikTok, and X. We are also on Blue Sky. If you don't like Twitter because Elon's a dick, Blue go Sky? across to Blue Sky. It's the new version of Twitter. Jeez. It's much more fun. It's There is a lot of AFLW people on there already, myself included. It's great. It's fun. We're on Blue Sky. Just search AFLW today there because I may have created that one over the weekend. Nice. I haven't told Social Girls. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> anyway, it's out there now. It's out there. Can you smell it? Because footy is back. Woo! All right. News. The AFLW 22 under 22 team was named. Mm-hmm. Chuck Rowbottom, just in there, four for four. Vice captain, yeah. Yep. Joins Mon Conti and someone else. There's like three players that have done the four for four basically every Chris year. Bar- under 20. Marcus, yep. Thank you. George under 22 Marcus, yeah. years old yep. that have been named every year they're available for it. Well done. Bad. That's great. My protest is Laura Gardner didn't make it, and Ooh. I'll just move on very quickly that there was no Laura Gardner in there. I was surprised there. Shade Goody didn't make it. I know that she's a lot younger than a lot of these players, but... Yeah. Bit of, um, that's that's very I surprising, actually. It, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of really good midfielders under 22, There's, though. Yeah. Let's also point out the fan voting thing kind of cooks it every year because let's remember Schultz didn't win Mark of the, mark of the Week. But when, she can win Mark of the Year. But she can win Mark of the Year because <laughs> it's fan voted. We love you, Bonnie, too good. But Schultz's Mark was like a thousand times better. Love you, Bonds. We had some yeah. uh, friends of the show. Emily Borg made it and Eliza McNamara, who we did a video with as well. So. Yeah. Awesome Liza's had a it. great season. Yeah. It's and a bloody good team, isn't it? I know this team it? could make finals. I, I, still like, do well I, in the finals. I would still take out, um, I'm sorry, Lucy Cronin, you're getting dropped for uh, Laura Gardner. That okay. Was, that was my one complaint. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. But it's a very Mimi good Hill. team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That- Zoe Prowse. All right, oh, Jasmine help. Fleming. Oh, this is, this just, is a great this team. Is a great Can team, we have right? this team play against <laughs> someone, the Irish team or something? Like, yeah, we'll it's do it. a very cool team. 22... Under 22 and then Maybe a, that's the old No, 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 no. 22 no. over 32. <laughs> oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. <laughs> AFLW Island. Yep. That. The All-Australian team. Like so. And then the under 22. If you're named the All-Australian team, you have to play in the under 22 team though. Okay. 
And then they all play against each other. Pick up, yeah, pick out from against the squad. The Irish, if you're Irish, you have to play for Ireland. And we just have the old school member back in the like day the, for cricket. Yeah, we the, had the triangular series. Yeah, the tri series. Bring Can. it on. That would actually be sick. That's awesome. <laughs> that. AFLW Tri-Series yes. 2024. That would be awesome. Emma, I'm available. 20 bucks. I'll come on board. Be bucks. your vice president. A few chips. Yeah, a few, few chips. chips. Yeah, few had a different. Chips. I'll go to a different vendor at Icon Park this weekend too. <laughs> uh, we've got some grand final entertainment. Uh, I do enjoy this drink personally. Uh, lime cordial. <laughs> oh, my God. That is the most like dad thing I to say. I drink lime cordial every day, so. <laughs> they are a good beer. Yeah. That's, that's Leave the cool. funny stuff to the funny people, Matt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what about the funny looking people? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's that's good little, good little gig. I was hoping G Flip was I every wanted year. G Flip. G Flip won an <laughs> Aria last night. Thing it's kind, it's kind of like, isn't it just like the G Flip thing yeah, yeah. that just gets done yeah. pre-game like, and we'll just get more players out there playing like, the drums, doing the things. We roll out Mike Brady to sing Up There Kazali. AFLW, we roll out G Flip. Yeah. The, just, like the costing might be a little bit different. Will they make a special appearance? Maybe. I, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Fre- fresh off an they Aria might. win last night, Song yeah. of the Year. Song of the Year, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised because G Flip loves the AFLW. I'm so sure yeah. they'll be there. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I'm, I'm, still I'm, good. I'm, yeah, I'm good. happy with it. But I don't know, they're very... Chill compared to like G Flip's gone. What, what was like, that band that played before the Brisbane grand final and the crowd went like silence was so boring? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, I was there. Lock, they, I played, was there they, played, they played, they played, they played that shirt. That their biggest hit is from a Triple J, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, it, not Shepherd, Shepherd. Yeah, and everyone's like, great, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, they play, yeah. yeah, they play that shirt song. It's like, ah, ah, we're, we're pumped. Shepherd Woody. are actually amazing. Yeah. I've seen them live a few times, oh. but it's they're not pre grand final. TBH, no one is really there at the time that the live act plays during the grand final. I uh, the, 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 the W or the the W. Okay. In the in the men's, it's massive because yeah. it, there's you know it's obviously on a stadium and it looks really good. Um, but <laughs> yeah, like even even last year, well, last when year Flip I, was playing. I was there and um, not many people there yet. But even the way they did the. Um, vocals and the, and the speakers were just off. So hopefully yeah. they, the, like some of the speakers were even facing the wrong way and you couldn't even hardly hear it. So I'm hoping they fix that this year. Mm. Cool. Which I'm sure they will. Um, did you guys talk about when the season will start next year on Monday? Uh, I, I can't remember. I can't even remember, to be honest. I, you can I don't remember it. what I had for dinner last night. Touch so it. don't oh, ask me about the Touch on it again. On so it. 12 games, 12 weeks, no condensed fixture. Grand final is like approximately the same date, basically the last weekend of yeah. November. You go back, so that means the season will start the week of August 11th. Yep. 12 games, 12 weeks, four weeks of finals, 16-week season. Extra game. No condensed fixture. Don't mind it. I'm pretty happy with that. Midweek footy hasn't been ruled out because obviously we've got the men, so maybe the season might start on a Midweek, Wednesday. Which, right? You know, I saw an interview I don't mind that. that said that they're probably going to get rid of the condensed fixture. No, no, they have got rid of it. Oh, it's they have 12, got rid of it. Confirmed. 12, 12, 12 no games, condensed. 12 oh, weeks. They have, but yeah. they, may, they may start the season midweek because bad, it's yeah. round 23 of the men's. Yeah. Yep. The Not, midweek footy was really successful this year from a um, broadcast yes, point of view. Yes. Not necessarily people at the game. Yeah. But I think that that's, yeah. that's seen as a really positive thing. Okay. So you know what this means? Monday night footy. Yeah. Monday night footy. Monday night. Why yeah. not, though? Monday, yeah. Tuesday, so Wednesday. No, I, I, Round two, showdown, <laughs> Adelaide Oval. No, there'll be no one there on a Monday Are night. you kidding? Uh, I'm not, For a showdown? I don't agree. I don't agree. Oh, you are so wrong. Oh, the right. time will tell. Yeah, it's all right. yeah. Yeah, time will tell. Time will tell. I can't wait. Um, it just personally for me, it works out like I, I get home from a holiday six weeks before the season starts so I can hit the ground running. Perfect. Uh, Stats guy, you're nice and happy because North Melbourne could be at full strength this weekend. Well, the, the rumours are that Emma Carney's playing, but I don't know if that's just from all the North pages 100%. I follow. She's but playing. She's a test. Emma's playing. She will power through anything this week to play, I think. But she's playing. still listed as a test. I reckon she'll play. Yeah. Which is 100%, so exciting. I reckon Skipper she's of the club. Just an absolute weapon. Just so good off half back. Very excited to see uh, Khan's back. She's had two weeks since she failed yeah. that last test. Yeah. And yeah. they, uh, yeah, 100%, yeah. they would They're have been to, like, um, oh, you're probably, you're probably a yes or no yeah. for whatever. Let's rest you and see. If They're we're holding their it. cards close to their chest. A bit, Correct. Yep. So Correct. She's That's playing. Good news for North. She, yep. She's playing 100%. Mm. Uh, and then <laughs> one problem for Emma. First up for like feels like eight weeks. It's going to be 35 degrees on Saturday afternoon. Ooh. Gonna that's going to be fun. But yeah, that's going to be Sunscreen is your friends, kids. I can't wait to see. There'll be there'll be some sweet little, uh, oh, what's the word? Zinc. For zinc, thank zinc, you. Yeah, a bit yeah. of zinc. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon someone would wear the blue zinc for North or would we just go the classic? Uh, It'll just be white. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. These are girls that fake tan. 
Do you know, before uh, the game, uh, they're not going to put blues True, yeah. in. Yeah. Actually, that, that was on the interview on Monday. <laughs> so, uh, Ruby, yeah. yeah. People are coming on with their lashes done, you know what I mean? They're not going to put blues in. Speak, <laughs> speaking of fake tan, allegedly our interviewer, uh, interviewee, sorry, Jade Ellinger has fake tan, so we're going to find out if she does right now. <laughs> All right, how good is this ahead of a massive prelim final this weekend at Brighton Homes Arena against, let's just say it, it is their old foes as the Brisbane Lions take on the Adelaide Crows, joined by Jade Ellinger from the Brisbane Lions. Good morning, Jade. Good morning, guys. Thanks so much for having me on. Woo! We're, we're very excited to have you on. It's such a huge game this weekend. Obviously a massive rival, but you guys have played each other a bazillion times. Yeah. How, what, like, What's the feeling around the club? Do you guys like... The rivalry. Do you like those really strong, tough games? Yes, I think we love versing Adelaide, and I honestly think this is like the fourteenth time we've played them in the history. So, like the most played um, game in the history. <laughs> but we love versing Adelaide. We know it's going to be like a very, very fierce competition. And I know we've got the up on them the last few times, but it's only been like what a few points each time. So it's like it comes down to nothing. And we were rewatching the um, round five game the other day, and it was they were winning until a minute 30 to go so <laughs> it's going to be very close my prediction this week is extra time oh that's not Ooh. nice yeah. that's stressful yeah. <laughs> that's very stressful I, as that a spectator and a lover of the game it is something that i would absolutely love to see in a final i would love i would love that as long as we are on the receiving end of the win at the uh, end yeah. <laughs> cuz i was going to ask how does extra time as a defender make you feel because like <laughs> We, we saw last week where uh, Hawthorne rushed that behind with a minute to go. Like the stress levels as a defender yeah. would be just disgustingly bad. Yeah. I'm Actually, I think I changed my mind. I don't think I want extra time. <laughs> See, these are the things Especially I Especially not of. in what that 35 degree heat that they're playing in as well. No, nah, it's Melbourne. Brisbane's oh. not as bad. Oh, Brisbane's not be... as bad. Okay. We'll be that time. It, is, it has been ridiculously muggy at the moment, but it's gone in a bit of a, I'd say cold snap. It's still 25 degrees. But <laughs> cold snap in Brisbane, 25 digs. Well, in, in sleeves, like in sleeves right oh, now, oh, clearly <laughs> cold. I was in Brisbane like a couple of months ago and I reckon it would have been like 22, 23 degrees yeah. and I was in a like a, a terrace along the river there and they had like the heaters on. I was like, this is great because I'm cold. We, but- yeah. we are precious. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I was in Brisbane August and it was 28 degrees. I was in shorts. Like this is the best. It I was having great the place. greatest <laughs> time. It was that understanding yeah. of why my group chat wants to move to mm-hmm. Gold Coast or Brisbane. Like, I think I understand it now. You but, get it now. You get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but just going back, we talked about obviously the Adelaide and the, the intense rivalry you guys have. This brings me to like, it's a, it's a very silly question. But it's like, wouldn't you rather play a prelim against a team that you usually beat by 10 goals? Be like, yeah, this is much more relaxing mentally and physically. Like I heard Ben Whitey plays for Arsenal. They're like, oh, who would you want to play in the Champions League final? He's like, uh, the worst team in it. So we're a better chance of winning. <laughs> like, isn't that just, I know it's great for the spectacle and the contest, but surely just like, oh, geez, I'd love an easy one. An easy one. But yeah, we play AFW. There's no such thing as an easy one. There we go. <laughs> you know I mean? Like they're all so close. And like I'd say in years gone by, teams have probably gone in with that attitude in round games. Mm. We are guilty of it as well. Um, and we end up losing or it becomes a lot closer than it is. So yeah, you can't pick it these days. And I think versing Adelaide is going to be great for us, but it's, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> we're never going to, we're not going to flog them by 10 goals. So <laughs> well, you, you, know, you never know. You could. You never know. Stranger things have happened in finals footy. Fair enough. I uh, Fair enough. Like it would be nice. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is there a bit of a buzz around Brisbane at the moment, obviously coming off the men's grand final win? Um, yeah. What's, what's the vibe like with, with you guys coming into finals? It's been great. Like out at Springers, ever since the boys were making finals and then winning finals from 40 points down and all of this crazy stuff was happening, the vibe's been incredible. Um, And then when they did win and they came back to the club um, for one of our games and they did the big fan day there afterwards, it was was humming. Like it's – and it's been such a good place ever since. And the boys have started to kind of come back into the club now and all the coaches and even Big O was back at training last (laughs) night. (laughs) Perfect. We're back in for training now that we're in finals. <laughs> good. Yeah, as a Swans fan, I loved that weekend. It was mm. great. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poor little Alex. We had to do a welfare check on him that day to make sure he was okay. Not yeah, nice. I did the same for uh, Chloe. Yeah, <laughs> see, see, this is it's the Swans thing. We, yeah. we didn't have a great week. Oh, um, but So you've had the week off and having that obviously after beating Hawthorne and you spent some time away. How good is that? 
leading into a prelim final just to get away and just sort of switch off mentally and physically before what is going to be the most hectic week of your year? Yeah, it, it was really nice to have a weekend off in the middle of it. It's, it feels like it's not finals for for those two days that we got off. Um, we did have a big session on the Friday just to make sure we were ready with a bit of match practice um, internally. So it was almost a weekend off, but then you were still cooked on Saturday, so it felt the same. <laughs> <laughs> And Jade, I mean, throughout your career at Brisbane, you've had a massive career there, some huge wins, some lows, some few wake-up calls. How do you reckon that the club has shaped you as a person in general? Oh, they, I've got no words for it really. Craig was one of my coaches in under 18s. So he's really seen the development from a tiny little rat bag teenager into <laughs> a a bigger rat bag as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, they, they've they been incredible. And what we've gone through as a club together um, from this whole, from me when I first got to the club, not playing and then heaps of players leaving, me getting an opportunity, winning a flag in the first season that I felt like I played the whole way through um, to then now be a considered a senior player, which is just ridiculous in my eyes. <laughs> but I feel like a baby. <laughs> um, is Yeah, it's incredible. And we've kind of had the same similar structure and like the main group of us have been together since we were probably 16, 17 years old now. So it is good to see everyone developing as players, but also as people. So one last footy question from me before we get into, you know, the fun stuff, which is why we're really here. So start of the season, round one, you're the defending premiers, you come in, you come up against North Melbourne, who in the nicest way of saying it, came to Springfield and punched you in the face. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I don't think anyone like saw that kind of a result coming. Reflecting on that and to where you are now in a prelim final weekend, was that, I know round one's silly to say a wake-up call, but was it a wake-up call losing that heavily in the first game? 100%. It was terrible. Like they, they did, they punched us in the face and they pulled our pants down at the same time. Like it was, yeah, we didn't play the way we wanted to play. They had an incredible third quarter and I think that they put like six goals on us um, mm. and we just could not stop their momentum. Like a very, very good team who had done a lot of work in an off season where we'd obviously beat them in the grand final. You're always going to come out with a vengeance, but Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, it was tough, but we learned so much from that game and I'd say we've played nothing like that ever since. So yeah. uh, a so blessing Jay, was embarrassing blessing, but it was a blessing. <laughs> it's round one. Everyone's forgotten about it. It was 15 weeks ago. You're fine. <laughs> You're still bringing it up though. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do it as Whoa, my shut down. It's shut my down. job as the host. I've got to ask one hard question. Oh investigative yeah. journalism from <laughs> Alex Dolly. Oh yeah, that's the investigation. <laughs> hey you got beaten in round one. What was that like? Well oh, Alex it oh, sucked. Oh, awesome. Um <laughs> Jay, just looking at your career from a personal aspect, you came from like, you know, sort of high school playing um, basketball. And I just want to ask, because so many like great basketballers have come into AFLW, but I did a bit of research and I want to ask if this fact is true. It was your first AFL game because your sports teacher offered you a day off school and you were like, absolutely, I'm going to come and do that. Yeah, it was probably like my first, second, third, fourth and fifth games were all because they said, come on, you can have another day off school. I was like, oh, okay, I'll come. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, but then you just you just had a love of the game after that. Yeah, I did actually start really enjoying it um, because I was playing like in the grade 12 team and I was probably only in grade 9 and 10. I was petrified to first play because I was like, these people are massive. Like I'm like 45 <laughs> kilos. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm still in touch with my school teacher, Um now to this day so he's yeah we talk footy all the time so I'm very grateful that he made me come and have a day off school (laughs) he must he must be absolutely stoked with himself giving a couple of little taps on the back being like (laughs) yeah I I found Jade Ellinger wins another flag in two weeks like see that see that Kids, <laughs> I did. You could, you could be Jade. It's like <laughs> that. it's one of those. It's it's racial, but it's something for the kids to sort of follow through because mm. it's what I suppose the current crop of players, which you are now, sort of you played over fifty games, and that next wave of talent coming through are those kids that have sort of grown up in essence watching you, Ali Andersons, Dakota, and things like that. How is that when a new player does come into the club? It's like I've been watching you since I was fifteen. It's crazy. And even when we've had some away trips to um, some of the other states, like there's girls waiting to see us and like, oh, we've been watching you for years. And I'm like, 
oh, I feel like I've just started playing. Like it's just, <laughs> it still doesn't seem real. It's probably one of those things you don't think about un- until about 10 years down the track when they're winning all of the awards. <laughs> And you're studying, um, you studied paramedic science and now you're doing a master's of nursing. Is that right? Yes. I actually just finished that. So I've finished that. I've got graduation in. You ticked off. You're all good. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a very hectic year. The club, another thing the club's been great for is helping me balance um, full-time study and football. So. And you would have had to do placement and stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. 800 and something else. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. One paid, yeah, I know. On top of the my undergrad, which was paramedic, which was another eight hundred unpaid hours, but that's okay. Wow, I'm wow. Be that's paid next year, I have a question about that, like being a nurse. That's I, forty weeks. I dated a doctor once, mm. and she gave me no like medical advice whatsoever. I was like, "No, oh, I'm sick," and she's like, "Just didn't do anything." <laughs> Google it. Click <laughs> Google it, right? So Chloe's obviously did her knee this year. Have you have you been like coming in with a like bit of advice, making sure that she's like strict and coming from a actually this is like professional advice that I'm giving you now, not just supportive <laughs> partner? Has it been um, moments? There's been moments. I reckon when she first came out of hospital, um, I wrote up like her, all of her medications and stuff like on the boxes, like what to have when they were for, so just so she knew because um, she was still all loopy from all the pain meds. <laughs> We had like a little sheet where she, um, where I wrote down like when to have all of her medications and make sure you like write down when you have them because otherwise you're going to end up having three painkillers and be high as a kite for the next eight hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, I'm not too much professional advice, just a lot of TLC. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Hmm. So now we get the fun stuff. So you're very active on social media and TikTok. There was one this morning that was quite funny just talking about your tan and everything else. Oh. How is that? It's getting getting to know that sort of lighter side of you and the players. How have you found that just sort of, I suppose, opening yourself up a little bit to the wider public? I think it comes with a lot of criticism sometimes, but it is it is quite funny and we do enjoy a lot of it. But it also opens the door, I guess, for a lot more opportunities outside of football and building that brand. Yeah. A football career is not going to be around forever and also we're still in that kind of pay gap getting trying to stretch to full time. So if you can build a brand outside of football, you're just going to help yourself in the long run. I did see as well, um, stalking your Instagram, um, you'll see I followed you if you want to follow me, that's fine. Um, I saw you went to Nepal in the off season last year with Dax and Nat Grider. That's amazing. I, I went to Nepal, uh, around the same, same age as you. I need to check if you had the same problem I did over there. Because the, at the, it's like altitude. Yeah. Like Kathmandu is like at like 1,250 metres above sea level and you don't get like altitude sickness, but you get like altitude Like I tried to go on a bike ride and I just had nothing, like nothing in the legs at all and I was cramping after 20 minutes. Did you experience anything like that as an um, actual athlete? No, well, I don't, not that I can recall. I think the only time we had to have any altitude kind of sickness, I think we think that when we went hot air ballooning, Nat got altitude sickness after that and was yeah. like, she was really unwell that afternoon. But apart from that, we were on Nat's um, boot camp the whole time. So we were at the local gym, gone running, doing all of our sessions. So we were fine. But I, yeah, I don't know if I was just in off season and Confirmed. unfit. Confirmed. Or- <laughs> Dawson, not an athlete. <laughs> yeah. Finally had it confirmed. I won't. I won't confirm it. I will not confirm. You're I will an not entertainer. It. That's so but, funny. But it must have been just an incredible experience. Nepal is like one of my favourite places in the entire world. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was a very eye-opening experience as well going into the hospital there because we went over there um, to volunteer and be in um, hospital for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Nat and I were in the hospital. Ellie and Dax, they could not stomach a hospital over there. They went into the schools, so that was that was much better for them. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, our our first day, I think, in the hospital, Nat and I were doing CPR for, for about an hour and a half. So oh, it was wow. full on. It was full on just to see how they operate in the, obviously a third world country and their levels of, like, education, even, like, hygiene. Just It's just they just make do with what they've got, and it's incredible to see, but – it was kind of, yeah, yeah, scary at the same time. I was like, girls, we can't get sick here. We, I don't <laughs> think we will make it home. <laughs> uh, so going towards that's just such a very, like, mellow point. I'm trying to – how do I transition? <laughs> but it's like, it's also like it's, it's like shows also what who you are as a person as well that you were giving up your time in the off-season to do that as well. Um, but we go to sort of off-field as well with what you're doing now. Like what 
what keeps you aside from your studies as well? What keeps you going through, you know, day to day when you're not around footy? Is it just, you know, you're trying to find time away from study, enjoying the beautiful sunshine? Like, what is Jade getting up to day to day? Day to day, well, yeah, when I'm not doing studying and the weather is nicer than this, I will definitely be in the sun. Um, my friends are actually all around where I live. I live like 40 minutes away from the club, so it's kind of like my little escape. I love the Redlands. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I get to stay out here um, with them, uh, hang out with my friends. They're all having babies at the moment as well, so it's even better. I've got lots of babies around me. Um, but, yeah, when I do have spare time, which is very limited, it's only been this last week that I've actually had time off, um, I've literally actually just been sleeping I've actually watched three <laughs> movies yeah. which is I haven't watched that many movies in years I don't think so I'm, I'm yeah I'm trying to figure out what to do with my time now because I was full-time study full-time placement trying to run a podcast trying to um run a social media account trying to do all of this but yeah now I can just be a footy footy player at the moment so great good, good time of year to be a footy player it is excellent yeah. if, you, if you can it's, be in it so pre-game the, we've got, I don't know, who's in charge of the DJ box, like who's playing the music and who's putting on terrible music that they just get confiscated straight away. Like, And then what are you listening to yourself? Bell Doors is on the DJ always. To, we'll, in the gym, we'll go to like one for one. Like I'll go on the DJ, but like pregame, it's always Bell. Yeah. have to rely on her for that. Who's going on the DJ that we're kicking off? Brie Conan, without a doubt. She ah. does not get that. Why? What has she done? <laughs> She she has a bit different music taste to us. Like it's not like I personally don't mind it, but when we're trying to get a bit G'd up, we're like Bree is probably not what we need. Like yeah. these are a little bit bit more old school. Her and Craig get along very well in that sense. <laughs> Craig will play Foo Fighters endlessly, so he's also banned from. I got um, another confession. I mean, made. I love the Foo Fighters, so now I just feel old. <laughs> I'm only yeah, 33. it's not a bad thing, but when you listen to that's just all we get. Like, uh, you know, okay. got, yeah. you need the variety. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Just, bit of variety there um and then what am i listening to whatever bell's playing yeah, yeah uh very much i'll bring the speaker on the bus as well everyone else has got their headphones on there'll be like three of us who didn't bring headphones or don't want to put headphones on so we'll have the speaker going and just anything anything that'll get us up and about awesome yeah all right well we finish off our interviews with the the same question um for everyone it's a bit of a what would you do situation okay. um so basically it's grand final day. Brisbane are in the grand final. You wake up the morning of and you have no idea where you are. You are not in your house. You've got no idea how you got there. You try to leave. You try and open the door. The door handle breaks off and it's like you are trapped. You cannot get out of this place. You grab your phone and it's got like 1% battery left. You've probably got like 20 seconds to make a phone call to get out. Who are you definitely calling from your team? to come and get you out and who are you definitely not calling to come and get you out so that you make the grand final on time? Oh, I'd have to call Kate Lutkins yeah. or Shannon Campbell. And what reason? Because those two, Lutzi, Lutzi would be there in a heartbeat to help us. She came and helped jumps out of my car within like three seconds when <laughs> I called her. So I know she would be willing to help and Shannon would be the exact same and they're just very responsible and so they would think through these things. Yeah. Who am I not calling? Um, oh, gosh. I probably wouldn't call Poppy for help, but I know that she would answer. <laughs> <dancer. laughs> She'd be the first person to answer, but I'm not sure how much assistance I'd be getting yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. And who else would be shocking? Oh, goodness. Probably Ellie. She wouldn't even answer the phone. <laughs> Do you reckon anyone's reckon calling you? If we, uh, if, we, if we put this uh, question out to anyone else in your team, do you reckon anyone's calling you to come and get them? I would like to think so. Because, <laughs> <laughs> one, I would definitely answer because I'm always on my phone. Yeah. And, two, like I, I do offer some some brains. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, go for bra- you go for bronzer. You're like, yours is Anne Hatcher. Anne Hatcher you just get runs through the door. I'm safe. Like, but also yeah, Kate cool. Lutkins, soldier. Yeah. Probably absolutely. runs through the door exactly. or has a battering ram. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. So yeah, her and Shannon would, they would be able to conspire something or Jade Progelli because there's two army there. So they would just, they would, they would figure it out. hundred yeah. percent. Not stressful. <laughs> yeah. Would be, would be calm in such a situation, but that's the best question to end to end on these interviews i love it because we get some great answers and everyone gets thrown under the bus yeah. it's the absolute <laughs> best of course yeah. most importantly preliminary final this weekend 7 30 australian eastern daylight time 6 30 if you're in brisbane seven o'clock if you're in adelaide 
And what's that, like 5.30 or 4.30 if you're in Perth? Doesn't matter. You're behind the times there anyway. Channel 7, KO, SEN, AFL app. You can get it all there as Brisbane take on Adelaide. Thank you for Jade Ellinger for joining us today. Thanks, guys. See you Saturday. Yeah, good luck this weekend. It's going to be awesome. All right. How good was that ahead of the preliminary final this Saturday? Jade Ellinger just up and about because you know what? Just another day that ends in Y. Brisbane playing in a prelim. Probably going to beat North Melbourne again in a grand final. And she lives in the the sun and the happiness. Yeah. 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 Not bad. Lives a great life. Slightly <laughs> jealous. Anyway, let's get to these games. Preliminary final weekend. Start off on Saturday afternoon. At the North Melbourne Flag Roos take on Port Adelaide. Icon Park, 3.05 p.m. It's going to be a steamy one. Make sure you drink plenty of water. Bring your sunscreen. Hydration, very important. Yes. They do give free water out at Icon Park. And free sunscreen. I've, I've definitely used that and a few free times. Po- and free popcorn. <laughs> so oh, anyway, let's go. get into this. Everything is free. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, not everything. Uh, so North Beat Port Adelaide earlier this year in like the worst conditioned game of the season. It hailed sideways at Whit Noble. It was crazy. That was a good one, wasn't it? It was 36 p- points. Yeah. So little synergy. It was prelim final weekend of the men's last two time, last time these two teams played. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Port have won eight straight since that game. They're a completely different team since that start yeah. of the season. It's almost 100%. like yeah, it rained and they're like, it, they just grew. Yeah. Oh, there we oh, go. That's, nice. there we that's go. actually quite that, nice, yeah. isn't that was, it? That was yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> you're coming into a team that just blitz craved everyone this year. North, best offense, best defense in the league. Port are seventh and eighth in that. But as we saw last week, if Port just start running and just don't care, they will run you down. On their offense as well, they're averaging 54 points in the last five weeks. Yes. That is ridiculous. That's Where, Port. Port. The, had, port. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, is okay. like, so like you go, all right, their offense, where was it? Seventh. But then you look in the last five weeks, I think they're second or third. So mm. they're absolutely flying at the right time of the season. They certainly are. But North, they just concede 18 points per game, yeah, which is ridiculous. That's that's actually cooked. Season, when I read yeah. that, I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. I had a look. It was like 18.4 or something like that because they've had a lot of games, zero, six points. Because last time they played Port was six points. Uh, Port yeah. got. So crazy. Yeah. Like 18 points, three goals. Number one offense, number one defense. Like this, 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 this is, is your not, premiership this is not the team. Hawthorne side that they beat, that Port beat. This last is, week, this is, right? this is yeah. like another two steps up. This yep. is not the Hawthorne team that we looked at. Like, ah, there's chinks. Yeah. Here's some chinks. Yeah. And they found the chinks. It's mm. like, oh, hi, Jazz Garner. Hi, Libby Birch. <laughs> hi, Kate Sheerlaw. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, this one, <laughs> yeah, like, good luck. <laughs> I I love the story of Port Adelaide. Yep. I think it's great. I think what they've done um, this season to be able to get where they are, undefeated the last eight games. Um, win a final win at a home, fi- yeah, win a yeah, final yeah. on the road. Amazing. Crazy. Well done. Like key players back in the side, so they're playing better footy. Everyone's stepping up. It's been absolutely amazing, and I think this is where it ends. Ooh. Oh, I yeah. think I, Unfortunately, I think, the fairy tale sort of runs. Yeah, yeah, I think that just just when you look at it up against North, I, I would love to see it be a really, really strong game and a really competitive <laughs> game, but. I just, I think North is just going to come out and smash them. But yeah, like you have, a, there are the parallels between Port's men's and W season. Win a couple of finals, then come up against the number one ranked team in a home prelim. Yeah. And it's like, they had that win last week. It's like, oh, like they beat, they beat Hawthorne in both semifinals. Oh, yeah, in the yeah. men's And it's well, like, yeah. oh my God, they've done it. This is amazing. Yeah. And then Sydney just go, yeah, 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 that's cute. Bang! Yeah. 40 points. Yeah. North Melbourne, yeah, 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 yeah. Bang! <laughs> Six goals. It like, it's just, yeah. it, it feels that way. North have just been chilling. They've found ways to win games when they've looked vulnerable. Mm. And it's just like, you look at North like, ah, there's a chink. And we're going to get to the end of the season in 10 days' time about, there was no chinks. Wow. Yeah. We'll yeah. have to wait well, for the well, yeah, possibly we... like last year. But, yeah. Yeah. But, but, then, but then you look like, it's just, the depth players from both teams are the ones that have stepped up. Like yeah, 100%. We saw in that last quarter last week where Port just started running and it, and it wasn't just Schultz and Gemma Houghton that were stepping up. You had yeah. Dowrick, you had Goody, mm-hmm. yep. you had a couple of others running off halfback and you're just like, okay, like yeah. there's a lot going on here. I've completely spaced on their halfback flanker who dead set tried to kamikaze yourself in one of the last contests. Uh, off halfback, short haircut. But Ebo Day. Yeah, Ebo Day. Yeah, Ebo yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So she... I've just, I'd spaced on it and I was like, it's not Tilly, because Tilly oh, plays yeah, for Hawthorne. Yeah, yeah. Just like, literally just goes crashing. so hard at every contest. So hard. And like, she's scary. <laughs> I've actually got notes in here as her as my yeah. most underrated player. Yeah. She's such 
a great defender, so reliable, and she actually kicked a goal last week. Yeah. Like just a third like, of her career, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Just. It's a good goal too. Yeah, just a really, really great player. And I thought Piper Wim- Window has actually been um, really good and consistent. The reason why I've noticed her so much yeah. is just because of her last name. Like whenever window. I hear yeah. Window and You're I'm right, like, wait, like, what? Window. That's window. Not a last name. Oh, there's Window. Oh, Window. <laughs> window. Yeah. Having a look at there's Window. There's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> there's a joke. It's Piper, be Window, the like, Cleaner, <laughs> Plumber. There's something in there. Oh, if her nickname isn't Cleaner or Plumber, I don't know what we're we doing. We need to find out. We need to interview a Port Adelaide I will, if Port Adelaide win, Lucas, if you're watching, you're getting an email. Yeah. You're probably going to get it today. Yeah. Give, it, give us give us window. Yeah. <laughs> give us window. Uh, but look, you just have a look at it. It's the tackling pressure from North is probably what's going to set them apart because you look at uh, in their midfield, like Jazz Garner will still lay tackles. You'll have a Mia look at King's the best Mia, tackler in the team. Mia King's I, actually, I'll like, just touch on her. We were yeah. saying about the depth players. Me King on almost every other team bar maybe Adelaide and Brisbane would be up there with their best player. She mm-hmm. gets so outshone in this North team. 20 disposals, 10 tackles, and four and a half clearances per game. Every good team needs those players. Oh, though. yeah. And if she was in another team, those numbers would be even more just Huge. because you got Garner, you got Riddell who are dominating on the ball. King is having an awesome, awesome season. And as a North fan, I feel like, yeah, she's a bit, a bit underrated. She's, she's really, the, really fun the to Scotty watch. Pippen. This guy, oh, that's a great call. I love, I love that. She is. She really is. So mm. she's, yeah, she's killing it. And I'm, yeah, happy to talk about her. All right, so the big question coming into this is, do North Melbourne underestimate Port Adelaide and does the heat even this up somewhat? Firstly, Ooh, that was my question. That's yeah. actually yeah. a really good point. Firstly, no. Secondly, no, because Port have ha- uh, North have had the week off, whereas Port played in a very hot game last week and could be energy sapped going home, having to come back. The thing I put in there, because uh, North players were talking about it during the week in a few interviews as well, they played against Brisbane, do we remember, in was round, it round one. one, and they smashed Brisbane in like 36-degree heat. So mm. it's pretty much the same. So I'll say no, it's not going to even up because North are really good in the, the heat. The other thing is a lot of these players, AFLW used to be in the summer. So yeah. a lot of these players are used to the heat more yeah. than more so than the men's, I think. So they've also been training for the last three weeks. It's been yeah. stinking hot. Yeah. So I think we'll I see mean, a, but we also yeah. saw Hawthorne like freeze up in that final True. quarter. Like everyone was going off with cramps, True. injury, like all that kind it of heat, hot. heat sort last of stuff. Matea be... Breed was like vomiting on the sidelines. Yeah. Yeah. So like it definitely has an impact, yeah. but I think it just needs to be managed yeah. really oh, well. They're, they're hydrating now. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. They're getting hydrated yeah. now for this. It's no carbs, just their, hydration. Their bench rotations are just so they can go to the toilet yeah. during yeah. that time. You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. So it just – I my dream scenario and like for the grand final, I want a showdown grand final. It's not going to happen. You want Adelaide, Port Adelaide. Yeah. That would be – taking you out of my North hat, that would be really cool the for the The spectacle of a showdown grand final – is just sick because we've never got. Be cool. a, I don't think we've got a men's showdown final ever. Uh, like no. just a final. No. So to have a showdown grand final as the first final, sorry cricket, you're getting kicked off for the Adelaide Oval. We're putting the post back up. Yeah, that'd be cool. I want well, that. They normally, if there's a is there's a grand final in Adelaide, they've always played at Adelaide Oval. Cricket. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> the, the, the pitch is literally in right now. Like, but. Ripping it up. <laughs> that'd Everybody be, rip it up. That'd be one of my, I, you'd need to find a way to put that at a bigger oval than Norwood because you can't have a 10,000 person grand final for a showdown. But it, Paul's not going to win anyway. Can I, am I allowed to just say that? Yeah. I don't want to get too calm. I'm touching wood because I'm a big tips, North fan. Tips, margin, best on ground. Stats go. Uh, I'm going North by 20. I think it's just going to be pretty like even and then the last quarter North will tear it up. I'm trying to think best on ground. I'll go Mia King. I just talked her up. I think she's mm. going to have an absolute blind. Everyone go, oh, yeah. I'm not, not going to give the best, oh, yeah, on player, yeah. best player on ground to Garner or Riddell or Sheila. I think, uh, yeah, King is going to step up in the midfield and get a lot of clearances because mm. I reckon Port are actually pretty good defensively, so they might lock down some of the better players. Obviously, you can't stop Garner, but they'll lock her down a little bit, so King's going to get best on ground. Mm. Um, I've said North by 26. Yep. B.O.G. Emma Carney. Oh, she hasn't she's going to play. Name. She's going to be like, oh. <laughs> She's going to have all that what? pent-up energy. <laughs> she's going to run through energy. Them. She's going to be so lippy. She's going to get out there, a couple of little, these guys. And, yeah. She's, she's scary when she's, she's on. She's played for like seven weeks Is or this just Emma Carney just lining up Sinead Goody going, right, oh, young buck. Oh, <laughs> how good would that be? Just like a boom. Yeah. <laughs> Emma Garney doesn't play the grand final she takes her. She got one she got reported. Oh, fingers crossed that does not happen. Anyway, oh North win this by six goals. Alice O'Loughlin kicks four.
Oh, that's a, I like that. Okay. I All like right, that. that's actually quite nice. Mm. Let's get to Brighton Homes Arena, 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time or Daylight Time, 6.30 over in Brisbane. Brisbane, take on the Adelaide Crows. Hobo, here we go again. <laughs> this is They just match up every single year. Awesome matchup in the finals or in the mm. season. Just, oh. It's quite a good one, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is good. <laughs> Can you just replay Liam doing that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. So last time these two teams played, it was men's grand final weekend on the Sunday. Brisbane won 35-33. Thank you, umpires. Fifth prelim Whoa. in a row for the Lions, who have won three of their last four uh, prelims. They've played 11 times, these two teams. Eight of them decided by two goals or less. There's no indication as to why that's not going to be nine of 12. Yeah. Offense, Brisbane second. Adelaide fourth. Defense, Lions fifth. Adelaide second. Lions have lost 10 of their last 11 oh. when they've had a week off. Oh. That doesn't wait, seem... Wait, no, give me that, that again. Wait, I, I thought you put that in there. I reckon no. stuff that went up. Sorry. <laughs> if we have to uh, redo that one. Good you one, could, You could read it guy. before you go on air, but that's okay. And you're the guy that does the run trip. <laughs> yeah. Mate, I've been, on, I've been on holidays. What have I meant to say there? They've won 10 of their last Dad, 11 matches. That's fighting. what I meant to say. They've won 10 of their last 11 matches and they've had the week to rest this week. Oh, you suck. Yeah, I meant to say one, not lost. Brisbane, good. <laughs> That's okay. all I meant. The Brisbane are in great form. Is, can we just say that? Yeah, oh, okay. So <laughs> we take a look at it. Sorry, mate. Brisbane's forward line, when they get rolling, quite good. Smith, Conway, Dax, all good. Sleeve watch as well. Sleeve watch from last weekend mm. on Saturday night when I was at the ground. No one had the long sleeves on. It was stinking hot. Mm. So I'll be on sleeve oh, watch no. again for Saif Conway. Actually, Didn't have them on in the first final. Okay. So what's the weather up there in Brisbane? Warm and humid. It's I mean, 25 and raining possibly. Ooh, so okay. very humid. Probably. So friend of the show, new best friend, Jade Ellinger, has averaged 17 touches, five tackles and four marks in the last month. As really I, consistent. As yeah. I said in that qualifying final, it, for the third quarter when Brisbane were lifting, it felt like she was involved in everything. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I only had five touches, but they felt very important. She's had such like a, a an incline every season every year, that she's yeah. been yeah. there. She's just gotten better and better and better and better. She's Yeah, yeah she's incredible. So we go to the Adelaide side of things last week. It's like, ah, good job, Freya. Go away. Yeah, we're gonna, they we're gonna win. They, they already knew beforehand. They would have been really confident. <laughs> Not even the most abilities. like, like ratcheted on Frio fan. The most like obsessive Nuffy was like, "We're gonna win this game." Like they would have thought we're a chance. They weren't gonna go like, "We're definitely beating Adelaide." No, no, no I, logical fan would have done that. And I, I actually came over going, "Oh yeah, that was it." Yeah, but they did it's enough like to when get you, over. It's the like line. when you have a meal and you're like, "That was kind of." You knew it was gonna be good, but you're like. Yeah, that wasn't great. Yeah. I was a bit... I, I expected... Adelaide, oh, you were talking expectations here. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Okay. I came they out, have smashed them I came out expecting them just to go, bang, like, and beat them by 70. But they've been like that all season. They, they have been they like had that a lot of, Really starting to annoy me. I think almost every game bar like two or three of Adelaide yeah. have been under like eight points when they win. So yeah. they've had a lot of... They don't usually smash teams. So we've, yeah. got, we've got the gun midfields going up against each other. We've got, you know, Ali Anderson... Going up against Hatchy and Marinoff, the few others floating around there Adwire. as well. Adwire's Does Adwire go to uh, Marinoff? And Hatcher, bit of a bigger side. And Hatcher yeah. goes to Anderson. Yeah. We've seen her do the tag yeah. this year a couple of times. I mean, at the end of the day, both of these teams are just going to be running their own games. Yeah. Then, We've discussed this. Yeah. The big teams just go, oh, we're just going to play our own We'll style. do our thing yeah. and then we'll see how it goes. And then if we need to True. take someone yeah. out, we will. But You've got, yeah. And then up, up forward for both teams, as we said, we've got Dax, Conway, Smith. You've got... Ponter and Gould in the forward yeah, line. Yeah, Gould's averaging the most contested marks in the They're comp. They're having and such a good year. Yeah. yeah. Gould's just awesome. 5.8 scoring moments, most in the league as well. So yeah. awesome. Then kicking goals. Just literally anything you want from a, a forward, like a, a stay-at-home forward. Yeah. Yeah, Gould's doing. And then you've got Bedell in the back line, who oh. we all know how I feel about her. Really good, yeah. Um, she's, just, she's just incredible. She's an absolute... Um, Brick wall, and then for Brisbane, you've got Conan up the other end Whoa. as a defender. You know, so, so good. It's just like those two ends. massive brick walls either yeah. end of the field. It's just, it's just going to be awesome. There's so many guns. There it <laughs> but is, then you, it is but the, awesome. you're, you're looking at the Sparks. Then you've got uh, Maddie Newman and Munyard on the wings mm -hmm. or half forward. This matchup is just. Like, that's why I put in the big question. I'm just getting to that early. Is this the best rivalry or matchup so, in the AFLW? Like, oh, ever, 100%. ever. My lovely partner is. is away this Saturday night. Like, she's on a, a work trip to Ballarat for Luxury Escapes. And I'm just like, she's like, what <laughs> are you doing? There's more information than everyone needed, but yep. She's on, and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like. <laughs> what is Luxury Escapes doing in Ballarat? That, that is my first question. <laughs> that's a good point. I 
There, I, I is will, there a luxury escape in Ballarat? I will That's find out. Cool. Or is this some, some sort of conference? I will find out on Sunday. Okay. It's been hosted by some someone. I don't know. They didn't ask questions. You're like, go on to Ballarat, bye, honey. <laughs> because, and she's like, what are you going to do? Like, Brisbane, Adelaide. Like, footy. Like, Brisbane, footy. Adelaide. Footy. Like, footy. And this is going to be great. Like, I am so pumped for this game of football because the last three games between these two teams, three points, two points, two points. Yeah. We oh. are guaranteed a good game of footy here. Yeah. Now that I said that, one team will win by like four goals. Like, oh, nah, I think sucks. it'll be really close. I think, th- I mean, this is my big call for the day. I'll say it early. But Adelaide I reckon, have lost the last three, by the way. I reckon we're going into extra time. Oh, Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah. And that could, if it's like hot and humid, that mm-hmm. could and not be annoying that's, for the week ooh, after. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, that's that's going to cook And something. then also it's the added on time because if Adelaide go to extra time and win, they fly home on Sunday. Mm. less recovery than, let's be honest, it's probably going to be north. For Brisbane as well, it's still a hard slog. And you said it. Is this the best rivalry in AFLW? History, yeah. Yes. It is. Correct. Like, they've played each other, I'm pretty sure, the most out of any team. Because yeah. a lot of teams haven't played each other that much because of all the different fixtures. And well, you don't play and they don't play finals. And then they don't play finals. But these two teams are always in finals. So then they, and oh, that, hi, we see you again in the prelim. They're, they're like, always oh. deep finals. Always they're deep either finals. in the grand hi, final, they're in the yeah. prelims, they play each other. They, they always play each other during the season, you know. They just, yeah, it's the best rivalry. And I, I love it. I'm so glad we get another final of it. Tip, margin, best on. <sighs> oh. You've gone extra time. Yeah, I've Brian. gone Brisbane by six in extra time. Oh, that would be yeah, so good. Goal. I like it. I'm yeah. going to go four points. Three of uh, the last four prelims that Brisbane have been in have been exactly four points. I don't know There's what. the stats, there's guys. A, there's He's a stat. Back. I just thought of that one. Uh, so four points. Best on ground. I will go. Oh, this is going to be tough. Do I pick a move? I'm going to go Smith up forward. He's going to kick a few goals. Ooh. Why not? I know that's tough because Brisbane have a good back line, but I reckon she's going to step up. The long levers. I'm doing it. Who are you going? Adelaide. Oh, okay. Two points. Marinoff. 37. 37. 14 clearances. Know. Oh, my God. 13 tackles and a goal. I say, oh, my God. She's, she's probably had that. I know. I'm just like, literally. Yeah. That's like every game. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah thanks, Alex. You hit her averages, you moron. <laughs> Do no, it for me. I don't mind me. that. Do it for me, Hoff. I had Tally Randall as best on ground. Okay, that's fair. I like yeah. it. I like it. This is just a great game of No, footy. you mean Chelsea Randall. Sorry. Yeah, Talia right. Randall's North Melbourne. Yeah. Chelsea Randall. That's yeah. Right. Chelsea Randall. Randall's been yeah. awesome. The Randall. Probably yeah. other than Marinoff. I've best been calling her Crandall. Yeah. Crandall. Crandall. Yeah. Side note, I'm going to miss you, Milhouse. <laughs> Milhouse's actors quit the show. I saw that. The actress, yeah. voice actress. Yeah. Yeah. Sad times. Disappointing. Thrill House. Are you talking about this? Did we the just start talking about this? Because yeah. you said Crandall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Good. <sighs> anyway, yeah. I'm, there's, there's an upset in a prelim. Adelaide on the this road. Is, you reckon Adelaide is the upset? Yeah. To be fair, like, I they'll be underdogs. Slight, slight upset. So like, slight you, get, upset. You, you look at the men's prelims. Everyone was like, yeah, the Swans are definitely going to beat Port. Easy. Brisbane and Geelong was a coin toss. Yeah. And like, you hit Brisbane, who are the slight outsiders against Geelong that game. Adelaide slight outsiders here. We don't talk odds. Who cares? But I'm, I, I think Adelaide. Yep. Mm. Because they'll be, they should have won early this year. Mm. They should have done it. They could have done it. And Brisbane, similar to Hawthorne, there's a chink. I don't think. Brisbane have got a chink in the train, my friend. Mm. I mean, round one, that was a pretty big chink. All right, big call. Big call. Let's Stats go. man, big right. call for the weekend ahead. I'm going, this is not that big of a call at the start of it, but North lead the whole game and Mia King breakout game for her career. I know she's had some really good stat lines. I've said it before. She's going to get best on and yeah, shock everyone because everyone will be, go- no one will pick her for best on ground. I just think mm. she's going to break out and have a really good game against Port. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, my big call is the extra time, Adelaide. I love Brisbane. that because yeah. like, I'll that's be, so good. I'll be I like really a little that. kid hopped up on Red Bull oh, if that happens. It's yeah, a bit like so ridiculous. And just the chaos that it throws into the broadcast I know, team. That, and everything yeah, everyone like wants that. to go home. I love it. Nah. Everyone can handle a rain delay, a lightning <laughs> delay, but what happens if it's extra time yes. in the prelim final? And Channel 7's, oh. and Channel 7's got to get to... Be, uh, better call Saul or cooking with Huey or something at like nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I can't mind it. What's your big call? Jazz Ferguson in North Melbourne's best. Oh, for yeah. the, in the wow. back line? Yeah, yeah okay. back line. Intercept, She's been in, really intercept good. marks yep. and, and shutting down, maybe cutting across Gemma Houghton, who, so we had full Joe. And we didn't. You didn't mention this on the show on Monday. Oh yeah, no. we didn't full talk. Joe Danaher was a thing in the men's show this year because mm. you don't know now what's going to happen. Now yeah. that Joe's retired, yeah, 
We need a new full Joe Danaher. Yeah. It's full Gemma Houghton. It's the full Gemma. Yeah, but it's Gemma's full... more consistent. No, when Jem took that mark, played on and kicked and hit the post from seven metres oh, yeah, out. true, true. And then hit the boonana. Full Gem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Full Gemma. <laughs> All right. I don't mind. Love. Also, Gemma goes full Gemma. Let's get her on the pod. Next season, yep. And you say that to her. I would yeah. love to see that. Because <laughs> she's, she's pretty what? big. <laughs> Enigmatic and awesome. Yeah. There you go. No, I've heard that's, she's, that's I've the, heard she's lovely from uh, Emily Borg. Oh, she's and, amazing. But that's, that's the full joke. Really, she's like the mum of the you, team. You yeah. don't know what you're going to get and it's fun and you just watch it going, it is great. She might even admit herself that. Yeah. that Gemma, do you know what you're going to do when you get the footy? No. Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I, I, will, I will give you a sandwich if you say that to Gemma Howard. I still owe you a sandwich uh, you too. Know, you I, you'll say it if it's an online interview. Maybe, <laughs> not, maybe not in person. <laughs> no, I will. <laughs> do it. If Port no, Adelaide flies will, across. Guys. Anyway, that'll do us for AFLW today. Well, for today. Thank you to the crew for being back together. Thank you for Stats Guy in his 73-year-old shirt. It's good to, <laughs> Thank you. Good hey. to see that you borrowed that from Grandpa McCallion. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Honestly, right. I think my... Dust off a couple of mothballs yeah, there, it's, it's not even that old. It looks old. All right, whatever. Thanks to Bryony. <laughs> in a great space. <laughs> and thanks to me for coming back from holiday refreshed, energetic, ready to go. Also, shout out to Spence for awesome job that uh, she yeah, well, did on Spence. Monday. Yeah, that, that was, was great. good stuff, Spence. Really good. I haven't told you yet, but you're on the show at some stage next season too. Now, remember to smash a like across the social, see us doing awesome stuff throughout the social media, filling in those footy gaps. We still have a bunch of content that we haven't put out from, you know, before the season. So you want footy content? We've still got it coming to you. Yep. Facebook, Instagram, X. TikTok, and now Blue Sky, AFLW Today, and of course, YouTube. Hit the notifications bell, subscribe. Anytime we do anything, it'll come out. Only got a couple more episodes left. I'm pretty sad about that. Oh, It's prelim final week. But it's the best, but it's the best week. Best week of footy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Next week, grand final week. We'll be back on Monday to wrap it up. I think we're going to do a Friday show. We'll wait for teams to be announced for the grand final show. Yeah. Interviews may be coming, but they'll be done, probably done earlier in the week. I'm going to try and talk to some clubs. We'll see what we can do there, but I think we'll do it next Friday. So, Bang on when what do we got two shows out. left? Yeah, technically three because we'll probably do a review show on the Monday. You, gotcha. You can come hang if you want, but you, you don't need to. <laughs> your, your season's done as of uh, Friday afternoon. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, get around them like I got around that really pathetic steak at Squires in Torquay. <laughs> don't go there. It's really bad. It's overpriced. Don't do it to yourselves. Anyway, that's it for today. We'll catch you on Monday for more AFLW today. Till then, look after yourselves. Make sure you eat a good steak. And remember, foot is back.